Welcome to everybody. I'm Alexandra. I'm the leader and creative director of City of London Symphonia. And my guest today is our wonderful co-principal cello, Jolie Coos. Jolie, thank you for joining us. It's a real pleasure, Alex, and it's absolutely lovely to see you again. Is it lovely to see each other after all this time? <laughs> Now, some of you out there may have been watching our Comfortable Classical at Home concerts, which are every Tuesday, every Thursday, 11.30, live on Facebook. So if you haven't watched one, please do join us at some point. But Joey, you were one of the first of our musicians to embark upon one of these episodes. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your experience of it, how you approached it, and how it felt uh, performing it's a bit can feel a bit weird performing to a screen in your in your front room, but how how did it feel? Um, it was uh, I had two sides to it. So first of all, I was equally excited as nervous. I mean, really deeply nervous. I think our training as classical musicians is such that when we record something or have a sense of recording or putting it out there forever, then it has to be perfect. We're used to going live. I'm used to taking risks live on stage and if you miss something, it doesn't matter. And I had to really get my head around that. Like if it all goes wrong live um, or I have a sense of it not going right, how, how can I deal with that in my head? Not, not to put too much pressure on myself. That was the first one. So I had to let go of something and just say, go for it, what the hell? Um, and that was that actually was not just a decision it uh, every day I thought about it in the run-up to it don't put that pressure on yourself just doesn't matter doesn't matter um, and that meant then I ended up really enjoying it otherwise it would have been I think difficult there is no audience so it's dead and it was the first the first one I did for CLS was my first online dabble I've done quite a bit since then and I would say that never is it any less than quite stressful <laughs> the reason is and thank you for all the people that work at CLS and the staff because now I have to do all your jobs I have to put get the music to you that I have to program it that's your job often Alex so I'm my own artistic director get the music think about how I'm going to present it so now I'm a presenter then the first one I had to really think about well how's this going to look who's going to hold a camera or will I have it on a stand if it's not on a stand have I got any interesting camera shots so I suddenly had to become the director as well and then I had to put little tape down on the ground so that my chair was in the right place you know the job that you see Elaine doing uh, and you're doing everything and suddenly it felt really really stressful and I realized Wow, we're so looked after normally. Mm. And was the lighting okay? And all of these things that as a musician, you just take care of your playing. And now you have to do everything. It was an amazing episode though. Oh, um, thank you. It really was. Can I say for anyone listening who hasn't seen them, you can still access all of these. Or I think if you go to our website, uh, there's a link to the Facebook page. So please do go and have a look. Um, and just as a general thing, what I love about them is that they're all so different. Mm. The players have been given exactly the same brief, and yet the results are immensely varied. And you also get a real a feeling of the personality of the players. And that's been nice for the orchestra members, actually, to watch yeah. and support um, the players. But I think it's also lovely for the audience to really get to know our musicians a little bit better. Um, I'm aware, Alex, of just... Um how much talent there is and uh, talent some of it has been untapped until mm. now and you're looking going oh my goodness me i you know i knew person a was amazing but wow that's brilliant and you're right everyone's different uh, everyone brings different things to it but they're all so valuable really exactly valuable. talking of talent you you demonstrated uh, one of your very special party tricks Oh. <laughs> which is to sing and play at the same time. And I was wondering, um, I, I've seen you, you do it on a num number of occasions and it's fantastic. You do both brilliantly. It's, it's like proper singing and obviously proper, proper playing. Uh, how did you discover that you had this amazing ability? And also, but is it something you've also had to work at, you know, just as you would practice playing the cello? Is it something you've had to hone and really 
Well, I was thinking about that because uh, something else that CLS has been doing on the mindfulness uh, uh, stuff online. And I just saw the most recent one with Ruth and her friend, Abel. And he was just fantastic. And he was also singing. Uh, when I started out, no one was doing it. And I realised I just wasn't going to get taken seriously. That's the honest truth, is that I'm an older bird. And 30 years ago when I was starting out, I don't think it was seen as okay to be doing these different things at the same time. So it was very much something I kept underneath. And, and the reason I did both was that there was a choice for me to be a professional singer. And in fact, I did do professional singing. In fact, <laughs> it paid my way through, through um, postgraduate at the academy on the cello. Yeah, oh, really? It paid better, yeah. Yeah, I remember going to sing in the chorus of um, Moses and Taran at the Lyon Opera House and stuff like that because I could sight sing, Schoenberg. Mm. So that, you know, that Cambridge choral scholar training um, and quite a bit of solo stuff. And I just let my voice drop. And I think I always knew whichever way you go, there's so much pressure. I put pressure on myself to do it well that actually it was nice to have singing as something where I just went, I'm not doing it seriously. The cello is serious. I've got enough pressure there. I'll have fun with that. And then I did branch out playing. Once I played the Rococo uh, at John Smith Square. And for an encore, I um, arranged, it was a very early time in my career, but I arranged Chattanooga Choo Choo for voice and cello. And I played it and I do remember, and it was a horrible feeling. I remember someone in the audience going, oh, and they hated it. And, um, and unfortunately that stayed with me for quite some time that, oh, maybe this just isn't okay to mix. And I'm just finding that music has changed and, and now mm -hmm. it really is okay. So in a way, I'm, I'm feeling more at ease now as a musician than I did if I'm honest with you, in my mid-twenties. Much more, much more, and the improvising that we're all asked to do. I mean, I, I've been doing, that has been in my head and wanting to do that for so long and it's just so nice to do it. And CLS really very much at the forefront of doing all of that, it's brilliant. I, I right. think you're right. I think too, it's to do with the way programmes are changing, actually, uh, oh. that now it's okay to put uh, Blackbird, uh, which you sang of her, in a concert next to uh, a piece of traditional classical music. It's okay to mix and match. And people like the contrast and the surprise of something classical against a song by the Beatles, for example. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Blackbird is, I mean, particularly that is, it lends itself quite well. It's a very simple song, but then there are some very simple Schubert songs. And I, quite, I, I think that actually might turn into a bit of a classic. It is a classic song, but what is classical, you know? Uh, and you're absolutely right. Certainly when I started, contemporary music was very different to what we think of as contemporary now. Now we have a lot of world music. You're allowed to have uh, music influenced by pop, folk, um, there's a real a mishmash of stuff coming in. That was just not around in the late 80s, early 90s. It was much more sort of austere stuff happening then. So I'm enjoying now, the mix now. It is, it's a wonderful mix. Yeah. And um, uh, talking of mixing, mixing things up, I have really missed mixing with my fellow musicians in this lockdown and playing with other people. It feels quite lonely, you know, you, you can, if you want, do hours of practice by yourself, but it's not the same no. as, as sort of reacting to what someone else does and feeling that special chemistry. But I imagine that for you, it, it, that's not the same because uh, you, of course, are married to another wonderful cellist, Tim yeah. Gill, and you're, both yeah. your children are very musical too. So have you, have you found that now having the space and the time together, which is probably um, unusual for, 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 for you guys, but um, have you done a lot of playing for, for fun, just making music together, or, or actually does everyday life still get in the way a little bit? No, I have to say the lockdown has been a quite extraordinary bubble. I mean, let, first of all, to, 
to pay immense respect for those for whom this bubble has been absolutely horrendous. Uh, that aside, I can't do anything about that. So all I can do is to make our lives here as good as it can be. Um, no, we've had, it's been a really fruitful time for us as a family. Um, in many ways, I mean, apart from the fact that we divvy up the jobs, so the kids both have to cook one night a week. They're 19 and 17, so much older than yours. I can, that's something we can do. Uh, and they've taken this incredibly seriously, and we're having mega meals. Dorily made uh, a whole Chinese meal that my daughter, 17 year old, um, absolutely fantastic. Pizza with homemade bases, you know. Oh, wow. Theo is a pasta king, and sort of, you know, it was prawns and courgettes with garlic and ginger last time. It was just mega. Tim is a curry king and does Saturday night curries, and I do all sorts in between. So the cooking, everyone has to do their bit of cleaning. We each have a cleaning chart and we have to do that once a week. And everyone is doing it, so that's good. And then the music is part of that. So um, Thursday nights, the NHS nights, we've done, um, particularly Timmy and Doralee, cello trios with singing most Thursday nights. And we've done all sorts of songs and arrange them popular songs that all our neighbors can come out and and enjoy and I've, you know really we really enjoyed doing that and then the big one and interesting enough you talked to roddy last week we were both in the same um a uh, big Facebook concert. There was a charity concert called Eurovirus. <laughs> lots of people went and sent in videos with funny songs about coronavirus or the lockdown and so on, or just joyous videos of them. And we decided, partly because our neighbour opposite said, do you know any Bowie? And we thought, well, if we had to arrange a Bowie song, it would have to be Life on Mars. And so the three of us uh, did some um, improvising and we did a big improvised section at the beginning of space music. Then Tim arranged Life on Mars and did a big solo for Dorothy in the middle eight. And then we then refer to Mars, the planets, right at the end and smash it out. And then on the day, my son, who'd been a bit low after missing out on his summer term at university, he hadn't really wanted to join in, but then I said to him, have you seen a picture of Ziggy Stardust? And I did the makeup and he joined in and sang. He's got a fantastic voice. So we did this video for Eurovirus and we all raised uh, about 1500 quid for Mind. So that would never have happened normally. We'd have all been way too busy. And it spent, we spent a whole Sunday rehearsing it and doing it. And we're really proud of that as a family completely cheesy but really proud that we got that together and i'm constantly um doing stuff so the next comfy classical will feature me and tim playing absolutely gorgeous romantic duet by glare followed by dolly and me doing a mishmash of yazoo's only you mishmashed with Haydn d cello concerto slow movement section oh my god that we we were mucking about singing together and she went oh yeah there this works so we put that together and we'll be featuring that as well fantastic so viewers you need to uh, watch out for that one when, when is it do you know Jodie? Uh, tuesday morning tuesday morning tuesday, okay. whatever that is june blah, blah, blah. june the 16th june the 16th so you can either catch it live depending on when you hear this or you can go to the website and uh find it you yeah I'll... your teeth late at night it's a good time yeah whenever you want yes exactly um but as well as sort of enjoying special family time together i know you've been busy with your teaching and and you've had a a, a little commissioning project on the go as well is that right your postcard uh... oh no the postcard that was uh, london cipnietta oh well, that was, but you... had a brilliant idea where and in fact it's gone global Alex, they asked people to write or do a graphic score on a postcard. Any age person can do it Fantastic. and they send it in. And then you, you go on live and you perform it. But obviously the day before, as a musician, you're doing a hell of a lot of interpreting, composing. Yeah. Oh. 
And then you have to go online. And my God, was that stressful. Oh, and, uh, and literally you have to just go, okay, what the hell? And I it love it. Yeah. But the other thing is I have to say, and I did say to Fiona at CLS, Fiona Lambert, it did help to have done all the um, improvising with my lovely colleagues at the, um, at the homes, at the Jewish homes, because this just opened the door to more possibilities in my head for improvising. And I did go off on one and I, I absolutely loved doing it. So I think um, we should do more of that in CLS as well. Not just, I mean, Sipnet are brilliant with it, fantastic, but we can also do that, I think, with elderly people, get them to draw. What a wonderful we... idea, yeah. yeah. Or when they respond to our music, if they draw something, but then you can, you can then uh, sort of interpret what, also what they've drawn. Yeah. Fantastic idea, we'll have to make a note of that one. So, but students know, with my students, they're all in their early 20s and really, there isn't one of them that didn't struggle with lockdown. Really hard, and three of them had finals. So I just made sure I see them every week, not only for their lesson, but we have a two hour cello gathering. And we've oh, had a lovely. project. We've had a real cello geek project where we're learning a really ridiculous, you know, geeky cello piece called the Klengel's Chacon, and it's got about twenty-eight fiendish variations. And we're just pl ploughing through every variation at about quarter speed. We're just <laughs> having fun, and then doing relays, relays round. Everyone plays something, you know, and it's just keeping. Keeping them on the horse, you know, keep, keep going, keep going. So, yeah, that's the oh, team. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I mean, you've got to laugh. We're having laughs. They're hearing their teacher play and going, oh, my God, I can't do up booster Carton. And they're laughing. And that's good. So they see I'm human and we're, so it's more collaborative rather than me being teacher, as it were. <laughs> <That one. laughs> Finally, Jolie. Um, Imagining a world without social distancing, you know, sort of post lockdown, or maybe, maybe even a perfect world. I would love to know what your idea of the ultimate concert experience would be, whether that's you playing or listening, and, and sort of the atmosphere of the concert, where it might be. What would just be your, your dream concert? That's really interesting. Um... I've got quite a few in my head. There wouldn't be one, so lots actually. But most of all, it has to be an environment that feels warm and the energy of the environment has to feel good. I would definitely have to play, but not in all of it. I would love to hear some and play because I really enjoy playing with all my colleagues. Um, I've not, I, I've not lost the magic of music in my life. It's always, always been there. So even the other day I did go to work. Oh my goodness me, there was like a one-off day and we all played Metamorphosen. And I <laughs> cried when we tuned up. Literally, yeah. the tuning up with everyone, play, it was such a shock to the system. And you realise you've been in this desert. I know I've been with my lovely family playing. But it's not, yeah. But it's not, it, it, it's different going out and hearing other instruments, violinists, uh, and meeting wonderful colleagues uh, with shared history and everyone feeling really rather bruised and worried about the future, clinging on to each other with a distance of 2.5 metres. Mm -hmm. You know, making music, it was very powerful, but yeah, before even the first note, I was already crying. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to duck out of this. I think, I just think the making of any music would be just mm. wonderful. I, I wanted to say one other thing that you don't know about, but that is so important during lockdown for me, has been a group that I've been in called the Bettys and Berties. And um, some, there are a couple of CLS players that, that join, and it came out of a keep fit thing that we were doing. And we meet every morning at 8.30 and we do Pilates, we do hit sessions. I've now got into Qigong because one of our, everyone pull, we pull resources. In to Becky does a bit of yoga and, and I'm now completely into mindfulness. So that's all happened in the last 13 weeks. I am the most fit I've ever been in my life. 
So I thought I'd add that in because if there are any Bettys and Berties out there watching, they have been a real support group for me emotionally, massively important. So mm. Alex, if you ever get the time, I know you've got little kids, but you're welcome to join us. Today. Always as an invitation to the Betty's yeah. and Berties. If you ever want to dip in, you just come in on our Zoom, get fit, come in. You should see Karen Jones, isn't it? And she is a <laughs> quiz queen. She sets quite wow. a quiz. She is mega and very, very funny because sometimes she tells you the answer by mistake. Well, she's <laughs> saying the question. <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh, it sounds wonderful. But do you have anything like that in your life, Alex? Or are you very embedded? Because you've got very young kids, so I suppose. Yeah, to be honest, at the moment, my days are so full of going from one thing to another. But I do live, I, I, I too, have, I've been running a lot. And I, I sort of live for that half an hour. Uh, I, I normally go at about half past six, just before bath time and bedtime. And um, yeah, that's my time for me. Keep it, and also it gives you head and my brain to think. I I think, and uh, yeah, I really need that now. I mean, I'm used. I used to run anyway, but I I go now every day without. I, well, I, for me, the the headspace, the mindfulness, is something that I've really really got into in the last thirteen weeks, and I am just so cross that I didn't do this before. I'm looking, going, oh my god, it's so important. And in fact, a lot of messes I've made in my life would have, I'm sure I could have, it would have been helpful if I'd given myself even just that 10 minutes of headspace. Uh, so developing the technique to do that has been incredibly useful. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure that's the same for lots of other people. I'm sure they've discovered, um, they have found out a lot about themselves, but they've also discovered new ways to look after themselves well I hope that they have I hope that people have yeah, I think been able to do that I in, hope so. in these strange times I know I know but the great thing is we do have technology so this app that I'm mm. using on the phone and I sent it I got sent a free month trial to all my students and I you know say come on guys you know if you're feeling a bit low try this 10 minutes a day come on and and it's had a huge effect on their playing one of them, I couldn't believe how he played last week. Really? You know, having been re really having suffered over lockdown, really completely, completely different attitude. It's wonderful. So lots, lots to glean from this time, despite Indeed. anxieties. Indeed. Yeah. Jolie, it's been so lovely to talk to you and to see you after all this time. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. <laughs> for listening and uh, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.